All right, guys, welcome to the Apple Football Hall. So for this special um, segment, so again, everybody asked for a preview of Atletico against Chelsea. So I thought I was going to bring in the 100% Chelsea boys. For all of you Chelsea guys out there, I know you watch this channel. So introduce yourselves. Come on, Brandon, you go first. All right, well, my name's Brandon, obviously, do the um, sort of presenting on 100% Chelsea and behind the camera as well. So, yeah, that's just me. What's going on, guys? I am Louis, uh, head to home to Chelsea. Top dog, I guess, safe to say. Top dog. Top dog. Um, yeah, so uh, obviously we're a Chelsea fan channel. Um, over 40,000 subscribers. We're currently not in Madrid. Which is, excuse me. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, we're currently not in Madrid. So uh, it's quite depressing, really. We're going to sit and watch here in a pub somewhere, <laughs> or even in a flat. Um, but uh, but yeah, we, we've currently got guys out of Madrid. We go to every single Chelsea game. There's always one of us there. Um, and uh, yeah, just make sure you check us out if you're, if you're a Chelsea fan or if you're not, you know, it's still pretty Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, so let's get stuck in here. So going into this game, should Chelsea feel confident against an Atletico Madrid side? So remember, this is an Atletico side where Oblak, I think, is a top five key keeper. Defensively, they're excellent. Midfield, superb. They don't have a striker. So going into here, how do you think Chelsea should approach this game? Attacking, balanced, counter-attack, what kind of approach do you think is right knowing how Atletico play, how pragmatic they are, and especially playing at home? I think it's safe to say that I think a counter-attacking system would suit us better. Obviously, when we've gone to Atletico before, we've gone to the, the point. Mm. For me, if we got four points out of Atletico, four points out of Roma, that's perfect. Mm. Um, the thing is, though, I just feel like the way you're saying they don't have a striker with Griezmann, like surely he's more of an attack. I think like, because I think Gamero is still in, in, in their team and he is utterly crap, <laughs> garbage. I mean, he's at, atrocious. Hence why we were so desperate to get Costa. Yeah. Griezmann, again, he either is an attacker winger or a false nine. Yeah. But I'm talking about the guy in the striking mm. position. That's their weakness. I That's mean, what, what, what they don't have. I mean, Atletico is always a hard place to go. You see in, in La Liga, they rarely concede many goals, mm. and if they do, it's the only the one, possibly the two. Especially away from them as well. But seeing as I was saying up on the way up here, you know, it's their new stadium. It's the first English team that are welcomed into their new stadium, especially in the Champions League as well. It's going to be a very, very tough game. The crowd is going to be fantastic, especially from our end as well, because we always have really good away crowds, yeah. uh, especially in Europe as well. So, I mean, we're going to have to support. We should be going in with some confidence because we've got Hazard back. Looks like he's going to start. Mm. Morata's on form. We've got, I mean, we've got a good, like, our, our back three, if we start with Rudiger over Cahill, a very, very strong back three. Louise coming back into the squad after, you know, not being suspended in Champions League. So we have got a strong squad. If we put out our strongest squad and we go for it, mm. I don't see why we couldn't cause an upset. So, so now, here's the, the real question here, and this is obviously going to be an issue that Chelsea fans have to in doing for the whole season. So if you have a situation where Fabregas is fit, Matic is fit, Bakayoko is fit, Kante is fit. In this game, what's the midfield that you start with? Knowing that, remember, Atletico are not an, an attacking team. Hence why a counter-attack wouldn't really work because they're not going to go full out against you. So, which midfield do you think works best I think, against an, an Atletico I think team? I think it'll be a 3 5 one, one ideally for me. I think, obviously, for me, <clears throat> I'm very pragmatic, yeah. so I, I, th I think that uh, if we just had that solidity in midfield, it's almost, it almost has a safety net. Yeah. When Atletico, if they do attack, mm. you know, which they can, like yeah. Carrasco, oh yeah, 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 huge, huge players. You know, yeah. if we have that safety net in midfield mm. and those just that defensive mentality, then one, we're either going to get the point. Two, one, we can nick one. But I can safely say that I don't think we'd lose that game if we had that five-man midfield. I mean, do you agree with me? I think if it was Bakayoko, Fabregas and Kante. I was going to say exactly no the same. I'd say if we play a 3-5-2 or a 3-5-1-1, because one, mm. Hazard can play up front. He's played as a false nine as he's played as a striker before when we mm. didn't have Costa. Um, it can work. Fabregas, like you said, you know, they're not very attacking. They're, they're, mm. they, they will, they'll probably attack more than us because we'll probably sit back yeah. and absorb the pressure and counter-attack. That's, mm. our, that's our way of playing. But Fabregas... You saw against Stoke, when he's got an off day, like he did against Arsenal, yeah. he's rubbish. Against, when he's, got on, like, when he's on form, mm. like he was against Stoke, picking out passes left, right and centre, mm -hmm. pinging balls. You know, he's got, he's got the understanding with, with Morata, he's played with him national team as well. So, you know, I think that in that sort of game, 
I think we have to play Fabregas because we it's in their it's in their country as well. It's in Spain, so mm -hmm. you know, Aspilicueta, Marcus Alonso, um, Morata, Fabregas, they're all going to be in their element. They're going to mm -hmm. understand the weather conditions. I think they'll play very very well in my opinion. So and, and what defense do you go with, knowing that? See, the thing about Atletico is, okay, forget about the old sole striker. People like Koke, Carrasco, Griezmann, they're very evasive. So you're going to be seeing a lot of movements. And when you watch them against Roma, like, Koke is a very smart player. He's like their, their points guard. So yeah. he'll always be getting in the ball. But the thing is that with Griezmann and Carrasco, these guys are going to be moving. So which defense do you think can cope with the mobility yeah. that Atletico will have going forward? Keyword there being mobile. Yeah. Cahill should not start. There you go. Hands down every time. 100%. Um, unfortunately, though, chances are, considering he was rested against Stokes, he probably will start. And there's the whole debate of, yes, he's our club captain. Yes, he's great. Don't get me wrong. Cahill, for us, for the past five years he's been at the club, has been absolutely fantastic. Mm. He's been he's been great. He's not been world class, yeah. but he's done a job. Yeah. This season has been a complete flick of the switch. It's yeah. almost like he's a completely different character. He relied a lot he's, on Louise last season and as yeah. mm. And I think it's starting to show now that Louise was obviously suspended. Um as Piliqueta obviously is is still is still very He's carrying, he's carrying the fence a little bit mm. when Cahill plays, and you can, yeah. you can kind of sense that. And, and also, I mean, just very quickly, I think, and also the thing with Aspley quite says that I think he's one of the most underrated players in the Premier League because his versatility is, um, is incredible. Fantastic. But the yeah. thing about Aspley is that he's small, and because he's small, like defensively, he's smart, positionally, he's amazing. But because he's small, that could be something that will play against him. But I don't think you'll play against think, him in, in, in this game. I don't think it, uh, him being small is a problem in any game whatsoever because we normally have the players in Rudiger, Christensen, Taylor, yeah. Louise, who are tall to cover for him. Yeah. And he is almost like a, he's a sweeper. Almost. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think, well, with, when Cahill's not out and you've got the likes of Rudiger alongside him, if ideally it'd be Rudiger, I'm guessing David Louise for me, that'd be mm. alongside that's been, that'd be my ideal back three mm. uh, tonight. Yes. I think that um, overall, I, I just I just feel, you know, uh, with Rudiger, the pace, the mobility, mm. uh, Aspilicueta, the mobility, and like you said, the way yeah. he reads the game. If you had Louise, you've got a ball playing centre half, he's also very, very physical. Mm. I don't think we should see too many problems at, at the back tonight. Unless Griezmann and Carrasco are on their so, game. So let's say you're concert. Let's break it down. So first 10, 15 minutes, how do you approach? Knowing that Atletico, for the first 10 minutes, they're going to go all out. How do you approach it as Chelsea? Do you say, you know what, tit for tat, you attack, we attack. Or do you say, let's sit deep and let it get a counter? So do you sit deep and counter? Or do you say, let's let's go wild west, bam, bam, bam? He's the manager, you should ask him. <laughs> Under seven's manager, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'd say, I'd, I'd, like, like you said, you sit, you sit back, you see how they play. If you've got... Carrasco who's causing problems, if you've got Griezmann who's causing problems, then you know that after the first 15 minutes you need to kind of adapt or if Luis is playing central and he needs to come across because that's really quite, is not dealing with, with Carrasco, you switch him around, you know, the, the first 10-15 minutes is a, is a, is a feel hmm. of how the game is going gonna, is gonna to go. If they're attacking us, we just need to sit, absorb the pressure and go because we have got a very strong defence. I think that we've got a very good counter-attacking option as well. If we play Fabregas, Fabregas can get the ball deep, play it along to you know Hazard, to William or Pedro who's playing, to Morata. And I think that that kind of swings in our favour a little bit. Yeah. I also think as well, we should start Zappa Costa over Moses. The only reason I'm saying that is because, like you said, they're not the tallest in the box. So, mm. you know, you don't really have to worry about that sort of aspect. I think Zappa, is Zappa Costa slightly smaller than Moses? Zappa Costa's very small. Yeah. He's very Italian. That's what he's I'm very saying. Small. He's quite smaller than Moses. Mm. And I think that we've seen him play a couple of times in, in like, you know, cup games and stuff like that and against Carabao. But I think today would, would kind of show off his aspect of the game. He's a very deep crosser of the ball. He loves to cross the ball in. Yeah, yeah. And I think today would be perfect to see that. I, I don't know if you agree. I, agree. I think he could be a fantastic I think, counter player. I, think, player. I, I honestly think Moses is... He shouldn't be first choice right wing back either. Hmm. I feel that Victor Moses is kind of turning himself into a liability again. Don't, don't get me wrong. I feel last year, he and Marcus Alonso were hmm. fantastic. Oh, yeah. They were there. If you're going to get the job done, they're great. But they're being very heavily coached by Conte. Conte was there on the touchdown saying, stick here, stick here, do this, do this. Yeah, yeah. And they got us over the line. They're fantastic in the Premier League. Alonso... We'll see how he does in the Champions League. I think he's great. To be fair to him, though, he's kind of 
gone off on his own a bit. He doesn't have to be coached as much now. I think Moses needs a little bit more guidance. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I think I, I, Marcus Alonso doesn't need as much coaching, but, but also, neither of them are players which are going to win you the Champions League. I mean, but also remember, like Moses, because like, in being Nigerian, he's a a winger that is his natural position mm, yeah. so he is still learning the right wing yeah. back position and whenever he plays for nigeria and just his natural inclination is like he's an attacking winger so i think he's still figuring out the um tactical requirements needed to be a right wing back, which is very different from, from being a, a, a winger but i think looking at this game again another question is pedro or william who do you go with william i think william walks the wing better than pedro but pedro is better at making those diagonal runs into attack yeah. and working well with Morata. So, against Atletico, which do you think works better? And knowing that Felipe Luis is a very strong left back, but who likes to, to attack. So, how do you think you can exploit the width? Do you want to go for William with the width, or do you want to go for Pedro, a bit more of a central threat? I'd go Pedro. I think William, against Stoke, he was poor. Mm. And he was misplacing passes. He was losing the ball far too easily. It was the poor. It was the poorest player on the pitch. That yeah, and I, I think I think Pedro is. It's almost I don't, Ratty's the one, wrong way to put it. Mm. His style of play, oh, yeah. his physicality, the mm. way very he causes rare, problems. It? It's, like, it's kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. scratch the surface. He's very raw. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. I, I feel that that's the word. against uh, rare. against <laughs> rare. Mate, <laughs> some people like the steak rare. Some like a raw. I mean, it's, 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 it's different. <laughs> but. Um, I, I, I like my stakes as a right winger by the name of Pedro. So uh, <laughs> I, I think yeah. I think if you watch 100% Chelsea, if you've seen me before, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of, of William. And uh, seriously, he's not. He hates him. I what? don't. I don't hate, hate him. him. I don't hate, hate him, him, but I strongly dislike him. He hates him. Simply because. After what he, remember that mutiny when they went against my boy Mourinho. William was the only guy that was putting in. Everyone always says this against me. Everyone always says this to me. But. He was scoring free kicks, he was putting in 10 out of 10 performances week in, week out. But after that, when the rest of the team showed up, he, he, went, dis he, he went missing. Not that he didn't play well, yeah. but he kind of just took a step back and was like, but, I've done but is that enough to, to hate him? Come on. It's like well, no, what I don't like about him is that when he gets the ball, or when he, you know, when he, when he, he's very predictable. Mm. He has the ball in the right wing position, and he'll run towards the defender, he'll then slow down, try and drop his shoulder, mm. go around him, and he takes too long to cross the ball in. Whereas mm. we are a counter attacking football team, and we play very, very quickly. We have mm. done for a long, long time. Yeah. And the players that we've had, like Iron Robin, Damian Duff, Joe Cole, in the wings, they've been fantastically, fantastically good at what they do because they're very fast at making decisions. And mm. Pedro is, is more, is, is quicker as with what he does because he's played in Spain, he's played in, you know, a quicker mind of football. Whereas Willian, he's very, very slow to do things. And it just frustrates me well, because he I'm, can I mean, be good. My response to that is, it depends what kind of team you're playing in this situation in the game. Again, Chelsea's normal game of counter-attack here, Pedro will walk. Well, if that's not working, and Pedro has been nullified and the middle is congested, that's what a winger does. Yeah. A winger is like, okay, I'm going to try and lose the ball. I'm going to try and lose the ball. I'm gonna try. But the whole winger is that you're trying to beat that defender and get that crossing. So it may look frustrating, but again, what a winger is trying to do is he's trying to make mistakes, make mistakes. Then he gets past the defender, then he, he puts in the cross. Because again, if the center is congested and you're trying to get the ball in the box to someone like a Morata, who's very good in the box, yeah. you need a William to try and oh, yeah, persist no, and I, get the yeah, cross. Yeah, I understand. I just think, <laughs> no, I just think on, that... Um, <laughs> No, I, I, I agree because you know recently he has he has proven me wrong that he has done well so far this season. There's one or two games where he's not been at his best, but um, you know he's proven me wrong this season. He's he's, he's actually taking on players and, and succeeding in it. And I understand that it's trial and error. You have to keep trying to succeed. But the only reason I prefer Pedro is because if he does if he does fail the first time at trying to take on a player, well, then next time he won't do the same thing again. He'll mm. cut in and he'll try something different or he'll try a one-two, go around a defender. You know, it's slightly different and it kind of adds a bit more excitement when you watch him, whereas Willian is kind of just like, he's lost it again. Mm. He's lost it again. You know, he doesn't try anything different. Do you, do you kind of agree? I agree, but then HH has just put it perfectly in terms of saying they're trying to beat the winger. No, I know. They're trying I mean. to be the I winner. Understand. I, understand. I think, I think Pep, the way Pedro does it, obviously he's a very, very different style. As mm. When he was at Barcelona, he was the kind of player who would play down the middle. He plays a striker yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot. And, um, you know, the way he cuts in is great. But then obviously if you've got two guys cutting in, mm. middle's going to be no, congested. No, I, I understand. So yeah. I, I, think, I, understand. I, think, I think there's going to be different options. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Because I don't think, for this way, playing Man City next, I don't think Morata will play a whole game. 
So what I think will probably happen is Hazard might end up playing the whole game. Might end up mm. putting him in the middle. Willian will come on. Pedro will move to the left. Mm. Nah. I'm interested to see how the three of them. Into I can see Batshuayi coming on at the end to see it out for maybe 10, 15 minutes because you know he scored a hat trick last week. He's, he's, his confidence is high. So especially that's weird. I know it was only against Nottingham Forest. Okay. Yeah. I know. Yes, it was only against Nottingham Forest. It doesn't Batshuayi. matter. No, that doesn't count. That, that doesn't count. Nottingham Forest doesn't count. <laughs> doesn't count. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you this. So just two two things that then we'll get to prediction scoreline. Hazard. Now. What is his best position and role? And especially, like, let's just let me ask it in, in, in two ways. What is his best position for this game? What is his best position overall? Is C's best position a winger, a number 10, or a supporting striker? So, for this game, where would you play him in? As a winger, a number 10, a free role, or a supporting striker? In this game, I play him as a number 10. Yeah, I'd agree. I think when, he, when, when we played against Stoke, obviously, we played the 3 5 1 1 when he came on. It just, it just, it was almost, it wasn't, actually no, it was like a 3-5-2, mm. but he wasn't a number 10, but he wasn't a supporting striker. Oh, okay. It was almost, it was just floating, floating between the two. and it was, it was kind of, it was almost set up like, so if, if you had the lines, you had the 3, the 5, you had Hazard, and then you had Morata. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, So yeah, I think, yeah. I think, he linked it all up. So mm. you had Fabregas just finding the pass, mm. Fabregas just finding Hazard, Hazard making the flicks, causing problems. Mm. Obviously that was a Stoke defence, and it wasn't even a full strength Stoke defence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a seasoned European. I mean, Diego Gordon is a beast. So this He's is fantastic. like a top, top defense. Yeah. So how to? I would how do you play him play in today. This? I would play him the same. I'd play him as a number ten. I think that if it's not working, you got to switch to a three-four-three. Put him out wide. I think three-four-three would be too attacking. I think we'd get found out in a three-four-three against the top international. Um, international well, that's why we start as a three-five-two or a three-five-one-one. And then yeah. if we if that doesn't work, then you go attacking. Because you've got to, you've got to, you've got to fix it some way. If we can't, if we're not playing a three-five-two, I can't see him playing for it. About the whole game said, do we have to go attacking? That's the thing. Listen, my my argument again, attacking is risky. But my argument is this: is that when I've seen Atletico get really beaten badly against Real and Barcelona, is when Real and Barcelona have outplayed them. They've really attacked them. If you don't really attack Atletico and you sort of play their game balanced, they'll put a tactical game suits Atletico better. Because yeah. they don't have to play that game very well. What yeah. Atletico don't like is when you attack them mm. and you play them and you try to dribble them. Hence why I think that the best approach, again, it has to be be measured, but the best approach is that no, we're going to try and outplay and come out at you because Atletico, against a team that's very attacking and I've seen them get totally outplayed by Barcelona and Real Madrid yeah. if you attack them. And against Hazard, who is a very good dribbler, if you instruct them that man, every time you get the ball, attack, attack, don't pass, don't go sideways, attack, 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 attack. I think that will upset Atletico and could be, could be an interesting tactic for like six or seven minutes in a game. So it's worth, uh, I reckon it's, it's worth, worth trying. It's worth trying because yeah. you know I think that's why we're better off going with Pedro and and Hazard if we do play as wingers because, like you said, they 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 attack they attack. You know, Willian okay he attacks but he's a bit slower with it. Mm. It was Pedro and, and Hazard very direct, and I think you know. If you directly try and attack that Atletico defence, they're not going to withstand it for 90 minutes. Okay. So. okay, so before we get to Scotland, so give me your form formation for this game with where you want people to play for this game in particular. So, ideal starting for starting 11 for me, and in terms of formation, go 3 5 1 1. Add that uh, solidity midfield that I was talking about. Okay. Uh, Thibaut Courtois and goal. Rudiger, uh, David Luiz, Aspen Quetta. Uh, Marcus Alonso, Zapacosta as the wing backs. Midfield three of Bakayoko, Kante, and Fabregas. Then you'd have Hazard just in behind Morata. Okay. I'd go Willy Caballero. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. Exactly the same as that. 3 5 1 1 or 3 5 2 play Hazard, maybe slightly in behind uh, Morata. I think that's where he's most dangerous. He can, he, obviously he's very good on the wing, he cuts in a lot, but I think he'd be really, really dangerous in that number 10 position. He was, he was really good against Stoke on Sunday in that similar position as well. So it'd be interesting to see how we do perform against against Atletico as well, considering if we do put out our strongest team, you know, where that strongest team can get us in Europe. It'd be very interesting to see. Yeah, I think we also have to bear in mind the Man City game and also That's probably realise that uh, the lineup we want won't happen, no. and I know that for a fact. Mm. Cahill will be in that starting eleven, and if he's not in that starting eleven, I don't know. Oh, uh, Louis will dye his hair blue. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, you'll dye your hair blue if he's not in the starting eleven. I'm making mistakes. So I'm dyeing my hair blue. <laughs> this barnet, mate, he needs to be taken care of. It's the only thing I've got going for me. Okay, so so give me a score, and I'm gonna ask that first. I think it's gonna be a tight game. A very tactical game. Yes. Um, with a few exciting bits, but I'm still gonna stick with because Atletico are playing at 
Wanda. That's what it's called, Wanda. It's called Wanda. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, W-A-N-D-A. Wanda, so, Wanda Metropolitana. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wanda, that sounds like a dish you get in a Yeah, no, you know, that, that's weird about like, Sorry, can I get the Wanda Metropolitana? <laughs> Thank you, cheers. I'm going with it, so one, so Atletico. God, if you were on our channel, you'd be getting roasted <laughs> right now. Um, should, we, should we insert this link after, after we win? <laughs> insert this clip after we win. 